Assalamu alaikum. Let's look at a situation 1400 years ago where the opportunity to tell the truth and the opportunity to not tell the truth are both present. We're talking about a town in modern day Arabia, Saudi Arabia called Mecca. In this town, there is a clan or a tribe called Quraysh that are predominant. They basically run the affairs of the town. They decide what happens. They make the decisions for them is all responsible, all honor and responsibility. There is a house of God called Kaaba that is under their auspicious. They basically run the entire show. Unfortunately, however, they are not known for their good dealings. So they often uh, treat those who come from outside into their town, particularly if they're not supported by other tribes uh, as uh, disrespectfully. They don't pay them their wages. They don't uh, take care of their dealings with them in honesty, etc. But in this town now is growing a man called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who becomes known for who becomes known for his honest dealings, who becomes known for his truthfulness, who becomes known for all the things that are diametrically opposite to what most people are doing. This is a man called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's look at something that he proclaimed in front of people who didn't necessarily know uh, that uh, he was a prophet. So one day he is asked by God to go outside the town and tell the people about the fact that they are created by God. There is only one God and that one day they will have to stand and explain all of what they have done to God. So he goes outside town of Mecca and he shouts in a manner which attracts attention. So people gather. When people gather, he says, O oh people, and he's standing on a small hill, he says, if I said to you behind this is an army ready to attack you, would you believe me? And the people unanimously say, yes, we will, because you don't lie. What an amazing statement, unanimous statement, um, a, a statement made by all the people standing to a man it really giving him that seal of confidence to say, no, you don't lie. We know you don't. So yes, we will believe you. Now, remember, the situation is not completely impossible for them to assess. If there was a big army standing behind the, the small hill, this army wouldn't just have come from nowhere. There would be noise. There would be obviously uh, dust rising because of the desert. There would be some indication that something was going on behind that hill. But in fact, the belief that the individuals had, all of them, was that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a truthful man. So what happens is the Prophet Sallallahu now, Muhammad, peace be upon him, now says, people, I want to tell you that there is only one God and I am his messenger. People listen. Some people don't like it. They leave, etc. But overall, it is the first introduction of people to oneness of God and the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now I want to propose something to all of you. If you were asked to talk to people, if you were asked to tell them something, would you be somebody that people would believe? Do they know you as a truthful person? If somebody was to ask about you, would you be described as somebody who can be trusted? This really is what I would like to emphasize happens when you live a truthful life. When you live a life that reflects honesty and which reflects truthfulness. The result of that is that you become very respectable in front of people. You will become somebody that people will want to do dealings with. They won't want to deal with you. They will want to make you your friend. They will, they will want you to come to their home. They will want you to become somebody that they can actually have a part of their company. How did that happen? By you telling the truth. By you and me becoming people, for example, as Muslims, known to those who are not Muslims as honest, as truthful. Because we didn't lie. We didn't say something that was not true, even as a joke. 
Sometimes I hear my friends and other people who I've seen, they say, I was just kidding. But kidding still does not allow us to say something that's not true. One time the Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad peace be upon him, saw a woman encouraging her uh, a, a, a small boy to come to him, uh, so come to her or him. I, I'm sorry, I've forgotten whether it was him or her. But the point is, they were inviting the child to come and said, we will give you a date. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, were you actually going to give you a date, uh, going to give a date to that uh, child? And the man said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, I was. The Prophet wasallam said, I am saying this because if you were saying this just to ask that child to come to you, in fact, you were not going to give him a date, this would be a lie and this would be taken against you. What else would happen when we did that? If we did that, we said we were going to do something, but we weren't going to. What did that just do? That made that other person become aware that it's okay to lie. Especially if this is done by somebody that they look up to. Imagine you are 12 years old and you have a five-year-old or a six-year-old uh, sister or brother. If they see you say, tell a lie, the little person believes that it's okay to lie because they look up to you as a role model. They look up to you as somebody they want to be like. Little children particularly really look up to their parents. They look up to their uh, older brothers and sisters, cousins, all even friends. They're all role models for them. So let us be careful about how we speak when it comes to truth. In this month of Ramadan, subhanallah, you know what the Prophet Sallallahu told us? He told us God is not in need of a person's fasting if they didn't give up sins, bad deeds. So let's say I don't eat and I don't drink in Ramadan all day, but I'm unable to stop lying. I'm unable to back by, I'm, I'm in, unable to stop backbiting. Or I'm unable to do something else that is normally a sin, normally something bad. Imagine what quality of fasting would I be presenting to God? What kind of help would this fast have for me when I'm presented in front of Allah? And what would other people think of me? Let's say a non-Muslim person found out that I am lying or a Muslim person that they found out that I'm fasting and yet I have told them a lie. Yet I have not stopped myself from saying things about others that they would not like if they heard it, which is what backbiting is. So I want to emphasize in this small presentation the importance of maintaining good manners. When we are fasting, it becomes even more important that we watch what we are saying, that we are careful about not lying, that we are careful about what we say about others, that we are careful about our role model aspect, which many people will look up to. Many of our friends, many of our family members perhaps will be able to be given a good role model when, when they see a, a young person tell the truth. Uh, truth is not just for the sake of looking good. Truth is also for the sake of pleasing Allah. Truth is also for the sake of following the legacy and the example of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Imagine having to be known in your whole environment, your school, your friends, that you are the most truthful person that you never lie. What a beautiful reputation that would be. Then one day when me and you would say that there is only one God and that we are going to one day stand in front of him, how impactful that statement would be, how powerful that statement would be, how much it would change our own family dynamics, for example, if we as a family adopt truthfulness as a mission of our family. We don't lie. We face the embarrassment of something having done something that is not very nice, but we don't add to it by lying. Imagine having that kind of beautiful legacy as a uh, as a example from Ramadan that goes on to become normal for us after Ramadan. So Ramadan is now not just fasting, not just eating, not drinking. Ramadan is also about not lying, not backbiting, not saying things about others that they would not like if they hurt them. May Allah Ta'ala make us people that are following the beautiful legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.